Hi, everybody. Welcome into Studio 31 and the premiere of VGK Origins, Jonathan Marshall, presented by Golden Entertainment and the Vegas Golden Knights. Darren Millard here, along with the television analyst for the Vegas Golden Knights, Shane Knighty, who also is the narrator and host <laughs> of this VGK Origins, Jonathan Marshall. So you've seen this. You were part of this process. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to experience today? Well, I think it's fascinating. What I like about these Origins piece, we did one with William Carlson years ago. This one's a little different because uh, the way it was filmed and voiced over. Um, but what I like about it is it's a look about the path kind of behind the scenes of the player, right? Going back to where they're from. And, uh, you know, kind of for Jonathan, this is about his climb to the NHL as, uh, you know, perceived as an undersized player that had to fight for every ounce he could get, whether it was at the junior level, whether it was at the, you know, the American Hockey League, the minor leagues, to work his way up to be an NHL or never losing that dream along the way through all those obstacles. And those stories really intrigue me about players because every player has, well, the majority of players, there's different paths to live that dream. And it doesn't always work out as you get drafted, you get developed by that organization, you play for that organization. I'm a prime example. My path was was a rocky, weaving roller coaster. And uh, the one thing you can't have throughout that, and, and what I like about these stories is, you know, it shows behind along with the family, how they've grown as a player, how they've grown as a person, uh, what they've overcome to live that dream. And, and uh, it, it, it's, it takes sacrifice, it takes perseverance. Um, and and that's, uh, that's what this is a little story of, of uh, his life uh, to that, to uh, becoming a Vegas Golden Knight. One thing I noticed, and keep an eye out for this, is physically, he still looks very similar to uh, a decade ago. Not all of us well, can no, say no. that. Yes. But the other part is, he's the same player today as he was 15 years ago. He was, because, you know, he's not a big guy. He's grown, certainly he's grown into a frame and become a man from when he started in junior and he was a boy learning. But, yeah, those, those same characteristics that make him – a player he is now, the goal scoring, the we always say the chip on the shoulder, a smaller guy that learned how to win battles, learned how to compete the right way. That has that was instilled in him at a young age. And because I think it's because he's had those, that's what's made him make it. And then that's what's made him become a top six, a thirty goal scorer in the National Hockey League. Is all those little things that makes up you know, Jonathan Marshall, so his characteristics uh, that were ingrained in him at a young age and his, the biggest thing though that I admire, a lot of people have those, but you've got to have the willingness to stick with it, stay true to yourself to become that. And that's what he did. 
Along with your guidance, uh, the narration through oh this, uh, this... Morgan Freeman, I joked, was unavailable, so they used me. <laughs> you do a very good job of this. Uh, I, I do think that uh, this is well done uh, from top to bottom. But you're also going to hear from a Hall of Famer yeah. in Patrick Waugh and a former teammate and current coach, Ryan Craig. Uh, Shane will be here afterwards, along with a visit by Jonathan Marcheseau to Studio 31 to reflect on this VGK Origins. Origins. Jonathan Marcheseau, presented by Golden Entertainment. Enjoy. What I like about boating is like, there's no bad days. It's just, you're always, if you're on the boat and you, whatever you do, you do like tubing or surfing for the kids or for your friends or whatever and it's just so much fun and it brings joy to everybody that's on the boat for sure and uh, definitely some of my best memories this summer. Jonathan Marcheseau's story began in Quebec, Canada. What started as big dreams developed him into the player we know and love today. His journey is of resilience, determination and love for his family. This is VGK Origins, Jonathan Marcheseau. Well, it's because of Piroy. He lives, you know that big brown house over there? With his sons, we came here two or three uh, summers in a row and he had a boat. And uh, we were just, me and my buddies were just doing our, our thing on the lake and I was like, I want to live here one day. Who is P. Roy? Well, none other than Hall of Fame goaltender Patrick Waugh, second all-time in wins by a goaltender and four-time Stanley Cup champion. Patrick is a nearby neighbor and was a major influence early in Jonathan's career. Having Marchie around me, Love it. It was easy because he was very close to my son Frederick. I mean, they're they're buddies, and they always been very close, and 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 they talk all year long. And having him around me, yeah, I love it. Marcheseau was born only 20 miles down the road from where he lives now in the town of Cap Rouge, where he put on skates for the first time. I started skating. I think I was three years old. Uh, I, th I think I started playing in the league around four or five years old. So I. In Quebec, we start at that age. Everybody plays hockey. Everybody skates on uh, on the ice uh, somewhere in a park, uh, on a pound or somewhere. And it's uh, it's it's kind of uh, my best childhood memories. I think it was like me going at the the rink with a couple of my friends at the outdoor rinks, and we go we would pack a lunch and would be there probably for 12 hours. So uh, it was a uh, great memories and. Uh, a lot of fun. When I was young, my brother was a fan of uh, Joe Sackick. So as growing up, he was kind of a guy I would look up to in the NHL a lot. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of great players in, uh, that grew up in the NHL, but growing up, uh, knowing a little bit more of a hockey, I was a big fan of Marty St. Louis. I uh, inspired a lot of uh, smaller version of hockey player. And um, yeah, he inspired me a lot. It's easy to understand why Jonathan Marcheseau looked up to Marty St. Louis. At 5'8", he was a player that overcame obstacles, played with a ton of heart, and became an elite player in the NHL, having a Hall of Fame career. I was never like the best. So people were like, oh, okay, like you gotta find something else. Uh, especially my parents, they were like, well, you need a plan B too. Like you need to go to school and stuff like that. And I always kept going to school, but at I realized I wanted to go play in Europe when I was in uh, junior. Uh, I remember one of my assistant coaches, his name was Claude Lefebvre. He was a really good coach for me. He was uh, super nice and uh, he was always there every day with a smile and just helping me, hel helping me how to become successful as a smaller hockey player. And uh, I did a lot of work with him. And he told me he had a great career in Europe. There's a lot of great leagues. So he kind of opened up the, my eyes towards this. And uh, that's when I was in junior, I wanted to, to do that.
On my team, I have uh, Thomas Shabbat from Ottawa, Patrick Bergeron from uh, Boston, and on the other team is David Savard that plays for Montreal now, and uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. So there's a few guys uh, that I skated with in the summer, and now we're against each other. Huh? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Before Marchessault was playing in charity games, he caught the eye of Patrick Waugh at the Quebec Junior Draft in 2007. At the time, we were owner of the, 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 the junior team, but also the midget AAA team here in Quebec. And um, the coach of the team said, can you guys do us a favor? Can you draft uh, Marchessault uh, in a late pick? Because um, if you draft him, we won't have to protect him. So it would be automatically on the team in the midget triple A. So, uh, so I said, okay, fine. We got, I think it was the 12 round or something like this. We picked him and um, our guys liked him, but you know, he was small and, and so we, we were not too sure, but Marchie came to camp and he was outstanding. You know, um, he was, uh, he was a good skater, got a great shot, um, and he, uh, he had some grit for, for his size, so I called the midget AAA team and I said, I'm sorry, but he's going to stay with the big club. <laughs> and it's funny how things happen sometimes, you know, like you give a break to, to a player and, and he takes advantage of it. And that's the story of, of Marching. I mean, he always found a way to, to make, you know, uh, room for himself on any lineups and came in at 17 years old, played really well for us. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, the following years he played well. Overage uh, was, uh, was another good year for him uh, and for us as a team. I was a little tough on him on that year because um, I saw the talent that he had and I felt that he didn't see it himself. And sometimes, I mean, you have to push harder on, on, on those guys. And, and he, I'm sure he felt that I was on his case a lot. But I always thought that if a coach tough on a player, it's because he likes him. If you don't like a player, you don't talk to him. I didn't know at that time. I know that couple of days I was like miser uh, miserable a little bit sometimes. But uh, at the same time, looking back from it, like I would have never made it without how he was with me. So uh, it was great for my, uh, my path. And uh, I, he was, it's remarkable, even at that, after you play in your All-Famer, you, you've done everything you won. You won four Stanley Cups, you've won multiple, you're on All-Famer. And he comes back here and he coached juniors and he, he doesn't do it because he needs it. He does it because he's passionate. I had funny stories with him because one day I came in the dressing room and we lost a couple of games in a row and, and he was eating a, a muffin and uh, and and, and uh, coffee, probably like a, like a special juice, whatever. He said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat those muffins. That's good for you. Yeah, good. Eat muffins. You can't skate. You're slow as a turtle. You can't even perform right now. Yeah, eat those muffins. They're very good for you. And then all the guys were around and they had their muffins and they were like, oh, what should we do with this? You know, like it was. But he was a leader on our team. And leaders, I mean, when they're positive, when they're, they're doing the right thing, you want them to lead. But when you see them like slipping, it's your job to make sure that they're back in track, especially at the junior level. Even after a great game, he would keep me humble. He would find something to say about me. Even if I scored two goals, it, he would just come at me and just like make me grinch for no reason. But it just, after realizing it, it was just all part of keeping me humble and down on earth and uh, yeah, it definitely helped.
body change. Get those knees up, high knees. Body change. Good shift, bud. Line change! Hurry up, I got a two o'clock tea time. Your heating and cooling system goes down, or you find a huge leak. It's time to call Yes, Air Conditioning and Plumbing. With more than 50 service trucks to cover the valley, we're always ready to help you 24 hours a day. Our technicians are highly trained to handle any plumbing or HVAC challenges in your home. In fact, they do their job so well, you may never see them again. Visit the yesmancan.com to schedule an appointment today. He's very involved. He's really ends on. He helps a lot and he's really funny and he loves to play with the kids. I think he's a natural. While hockey is a major focus, family is the most important aspect of Jonathan's life being a father of four. We've known each other since uh, my first year in Hartford. We got to know each other there, uh, long distance, and she was doing a trip to her friend in New York, and uh, we meet up, and the rest is history. Uh, and now we've been eight years we're married, and it's gonna be 10 years we're almost together, and uh, oh, it's, been, uh, it's been definitely a, a great ride, and uh, a lot of years to come. One day, he was playing in Hartford, back then and I've decided to like just risk it you know why not like we'll just I don't know I don't know what I was thinking and I don't know if I would do it again today but it ended up being really fun and we just had a good time. I met Alex and we've obviously found love super quick together and it was like easy and we we're like oh we want to be like young parents and I remember we were like, well, we're going to spend our rest of our life together. So why not like start now? So we started, I had my first child I was 23, but well, it was perfect for us. That's where we, that, that's what we wanted. And, uh, here we are today. We are extremely happy all together. And, uh, no, it's, it's been definitely a great ride. Out the front of the goal, Hagelin's back in, there's a long goal line, and it's goal! It's jammed in by Oni Marcheseau! While Marcheseau was becoming a family man, he was also becoming a name in the American Hockey League as well, which started with the Connecticut Whale, an affiliate of the New York Rangers. They signed me to go play in the East Coast, but maybe play in the HL, and uh, I showed up to Traverse City uh, for the Rangers, and uh, I was playing with two tough guys on the fourth line, and I was like, how am I gonna do something here? And uh, finally, they were good players. Uh, we just played, we played hard, and every game I was going to play uh, another uh, line higher. They, they, they would try me. And uh, I was playing good hockey, and uh, I just remember being put on the first line with Chris Newberry and Andre DeVoe out of nowhere. So, and I started doing pretty well. So that year made me realize, all right, I'm, I'm good in the AHL. Maybe I could make the NHL one day. With his season under his belt and his NHL aspirations growing stronger, he heads to Springfield, Connecticut, home of the Falcons, AHL affiliate of the Columbus Blue Jackets at the time. This is where his path crosses with current Golden Knights assistant coach, Ryan Craig. Ryan, captain of the Falcons, played a pivotal role on young Marshy's career. I remember when I showed up to Springfield, uh, Craiger was there and it was the first time I realized like this guy is a man <laughs> like he is massive he's a pro he works out takes care of his body and looking at him that 
that not that in Hartford there's no like guys like that but he's the one who really like stood up for me he's a genuine person like he actually cares everything about hockey but off the ice as well and uh, I think I was really lucky to have him as a captain but even luckier to have him as a coach <laughs> what do you think well, that's very nice Marky that was about 10 years ago yeah, he came in. I played against him the year before in Hartford. I was in Springfield. <clears throat> and we signed Marchie, and he came in. And uh, Marchie was, I think, 21 years old at the time. So, uh, yeah, you could tell he could play. Uh, he was a little raw around the edges. He had that uh, chip on his shoulder that he still has today, which makes him great. <laughs> but when, yeah, he talks about uh, standing up for him and, and helping him out, uh, yeah, that happened a few times. Marchie's mouth uh, can get a, other guys in trouble, and uh, but we were a team. Uh, we were a team, and we we stuck up for each other. I remember Marchie got jumped on a five-on-three. All three guys jumped him in a corner one time. Krasinovich is there, and now Odie Marchessault getting pummeled on the far side by Ty Wishart, and more players converge in the far corner. It was pure Things melee there. We were chasing everybody field. around the ice, but the you know what, uh, Marchie he talks about being in shape and, and all that stuff. That's where he is. That's the cool thing to watch. I, I played with this guy 10 years ago. I've now coached him for five years. It's it's the evolution of that and, and the maturity, not because he was immature, just because you just mature with situations you go through in life. And he's, he's really uh, earned everything he's got. Attention gate members, your connecting flight will arrive eventually. Have you been the victim of gate seat theft? If so, you may be entitled to a settlement. Here at the law offices of Butsky and Bubkus, we've helped thousands collect damages for seat thefts. We also represent wall theft, patches of floor theft, bathroom stall theft. If you sat on it and got up and someone else sat on it, we'll represent you. Let us help you sue the pants off the butt that stole your seat. The law offices of Butsky and Bubkus, not necessary for those who live the nonstop life. The greatest honor of being the defender of the ice is the opportunity to serve as a defender in the community by joining forces with comprehensive cancer centers in the crusade against cancer. We can defend the health of so many in our community through cancer awareness, early detection, advanced treatments, and groundbreaking research. Together, we'll fight on all fronts for a future without cancer. So when the boys got back into town, I had the idea to ride along with some of them to practice, just to catch up. Tag, you're it. Double stamp. Triple stamp, you're double stamp, you're it. You, you can't double stamp, double stamp. You can't triple stamp, double stamp. Oh, jeez. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Yeah! So maybe that wasn't my best idea. Showing off the range, uh, Jonathan Marsha. So <laughs> that's pretty impressive there. Just remembering the lines. That, that, that's the <laughs> toughest part. But yeah, well executed by both those guys. Hope All you're three. enjoying uh, VGK Origins. Jonathan Marsha. So presented by Golden Entertainment. At the completion of the program, Jonathan's going to join us here in Studio 31 for a little bit of reaction. We've got some notes written down. Patrick Waugh, 81, <clears throat> 18, the muffin story we got to yeah. get to as well. But right now, back to the completion of VGK Origins. Jonathan Marsha. So. Back to Atkinson, swings it across, Odie Marshall scores! After two full seasons in the American Hockey League, Marshall finally gets the call that sends him to the NHL. But he's about to learn not everything happens the way you want it to. When I got called up in Columbus, it was my first year there. Uh, I played two games, back to back, Detroit, St. Louis. And I remember I tried my best, but I don't think I was ready for the NHL. And it made me realize that I've done so much work and I had a little honeymoon phase with my first year and the second year was going great still. Uh, always one of the top players on my team. And uh, made me realize it's something to get there, but to stay there, it's it's a whole other level. For St. Denis, Marshall so in tight, score! Marshall was sent back down to the HL for a year and a half 
and with a chip on his shoulder. He played 56 games with the Springfield Falcons, but was traded in March of 2014 to the Tampa Bay Lightning and finished the year off with the Syracuse Crunch. Regardless of his jersey, he continued to work hard and put up impressive numbers. The southpaw, Erickson. Crunch with it. He drives. Score! I remember that year I played only two games in a regular season for the Lightning. We were uh, out at a restaurant grabbing a few beers with the boys in the AHL and just having a good time in Tampa. And I remember my uh, coach in the AHL, uh, Rob Zettler, calls me and he's like, Marchi, heads up, you might be playing tomorrow. Like, what do you mean? There's like, I remember there's Jonathan Drouin and Nemestikov were not even playing and they were part of the team all year. I was like, whatever and after Cooper calls me and he's like yeah Marchie you're in the lineup tomorrow so I'm like oh my god so I either so I start uh, taking a couple of glasses of water finish my dinner and I went home and start uh, I went to the hotel and sleep and uh, yeah so uh, either way next day I show up playing that game game six second round against Montreal Canadiens at home and we won and after, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of living on a cloud still. And next game, we play uh, New York Rangers uh, at MSG for the semifinals. And I played, we lost one nothing that game, unfortunately. And after, I didn't play again. But uh, that those two games were a big part of uh, me believing I can play in, uh, showing I can play in that uh, in the NHL. Those two playoff games made an impression not only on Marcheseau, but the coaches as well. He was ready. Jonathan only played 11 more AHL games and never looked back. The Tampa Bay Lightning called him up and he made the most of it by scoring his first NHL goal against the Boston Bruins. After 45 points, he's becoming the player he always wanted to be. But when the season came to an end, Jonathan was a free agent and the Marcheseau family was on the move again. Jonathan signed a two-year one-way contract with the Florida Panthers, where he broke out, putting up 30 goals and 51 points in 75 games, leading the Panthers in goals. His dreams were finally coming true. That year, just I just try to keep it rolling just to make sure I can give like some stability to my family. Dying seconds of the period, marches so right up the middle. Here's Marcia Show scores! Sets up Yandel over to Marcia so let's go home, baby! It's an overtime winner for Marcia so. I just signed a two-year deal with Florida. It's awesome. I'm gonna give two years at the same spot. Expansion draft happens. From Florida, the Vegas Golden Knights select Jonathan Marcia so. I remember I was on the golf course, my agent called me, he's like, yeah, you're not uh, you're not protected, Marchie, and uh, most likely you're the one who's getting selected because there's no deal getting done. And uh, yeah, I was a little shocked. I was like, I thought with the season I had, I earned the right to be protected, but I didn't. So you know, it's one of those things that you have a good year, and it just comes back to staying humble and keep grinding, keep working hard, and that's what I did. Jonathan Marcheseau is now a golden misfit. And he continued his success having a career year in season one, putting up 27 goals and 75 points. Marcheseau became a fan favorite and a consistent performer with the Golden Knights. And in his fifth season, he reached the 30 goal mark again with Vegas. And now, Midway through his sixth season with Vegas, Marcheseau is the all-time leader in goals, assists, and points for the Golden Knights. During his time with the Golden Knights, Jonathan Marshall has been able to use everything he has learned throughout his career. His leadership, tenacity, and grit shine through with every shift. His path wasn't a straight line, but it was all for one thing, his family. You see Marchie with his, with his family and his wife, uh, they're at the rink. He's on the ice with his boys. Uh, you know, he, he's involved in the minor hockey. Uh, it's, it's a neat uh, kind of circle that, that's gone through. 
And I think Marchi should be proud of uh, the man he's become and how he's matured. He, he knows what he has to do. He's, he's on really good track and, and very committed and has the logo at heart. And, and he wants to perform. He wants to win. And you always love having guys like this around you. Seeing my kids being so proud of him when he's on the highest and just one, one thing to be good in their sports. And I think it's just a good lesson for them. Like if you work hard and you really like hold on to your dream, like it, you, you can make it happen, you know? After many stops on his journey and doing everything to make a name for himself, Marcia So and his family have finally found a home. That's where I see myself finishing my career. That's where I see myself like, uh, like this is where I've, I've got stability for my family. This is where I've, I've had success in hockey. This is where like, I, we built something. Like all the players in the organization, we honestly like built something there and uh, take a lot of pride in that. And, uh, main goal is to, to bring a cup for sure. Every journey has a story. Every story has a beginning. Pleased to be joined in Studio 31 by Jonathan Marcheseau. Uh, thank you for it. That was fabulous. How would you describe your journey? Uh, bumpy, I would say. Uh, yeah, it took a little longer time, uh, 300 games in the AHL and... Uh, a lot of uh, up and down, but uh, sticking to the believing to me and uh, sticking to uh, the process of getting better every day. And, and that's the, the thing when we, Darren was asking me about this. That's what I love about this story is people don't realize the obstacles. I was saying, you know, a lot of players, you know, there's different paths for everyone. It's not, you know, everyone thinks you get drafted, you get developed, you play for that team. You didn't, and the obstacles to overcome, and you know, there's at times your belief can waver, but you kept it. Was there a moment when it really, it, maybe was there a hardest moment throughout that that you, you wondered, is this gonna happen? And what maybe helped you? Was there, was it family, was it your wife? Was it, uh, what helped push you forward? Yeah, there's a few moments, honestly, uh, in Springfield uh, yeah. with the organization of Columbus that I, it happened quite often, like I was just, tired to be there not getting opportunities that I I thought I should have had but at the same time I don't think I was as ready as uh, when I when I showed up to uh, Tampa's organization in Syracuse uh, I thought at least I was not if, even if I wasn't getting opportunities there was no injuries or anything like that uh, but at least I was happy there uh, what brought me a lot of happiness is the uh, the organization, how they treated us, the the guys down there, and I thought I'm super. I have a lot of recognition towards that organization because they treat their players through down, even to the HL, super nice. And uh, uh, what brought me a lot of happiness is after games, like I was growing my family, you know, like uh, so. That's that's one thing. Like still now, like I'm disappointed sometimes after games, and I come back and I wake up the next day and I see them. That's what brings me joy and I think a lot of the motivation that keeps me going. Something I've realized over the time in dealing with you uh, as a player and media is you carry this journey with you. You reference uh, some of the times and how coaches uh, maybe didn't grant you an automatic entry into the National Hockey League and you use that as motivation to this day? Yeah, I mean obviously is a lot of uh, uh, bumps to the, to the right to, to the NHL but also it's uh, uh, there's opportunities and you know, opportunities sometimes that don't happen three and four times or five times like a first rounder would have or anything like that and when you have your chance you got to seize it and uh, I thought I was uh, I was pretty lucky to get called up there in Tampa I think there was like three or four injuries up up front and I was put in a situation that I was able to play 
second, third line and on with power play and stuff like that during that short period of time. And I was able to, to produce and get some wins for our team. So uh, that's what helped me a lot is to, to being a gamer in those situations and uh, keep the momentum going. And I, that's what I wanted. I just wanted a little bit of a stability in the NHL with, uh, and some stability to give to my family. And, and you mentioned that at one point you said you recognized what it was going to take to stay in the NHL rather than just get called up. What was that? Uh, the, just to, well, still at that day, just to yeah. perform every day, you know, like if, if you don't do the job one year the next, the next year, they might find somebody else. So it's just the way it is. And there's no certainty in the NHL. It's, it's sad, but it's, that's the way it is. And it, everybody's kept uh, accountable. And, uh, I think that's a lot of it, uh, drives me still, you know, I still have, uh, uh, the passion to become better. Uh, like, uh. I'm still never satisfied with what I've done the night before or anything like that. Like, like that. So I want to keep going, and um, that's uh, it's going to be hard for me to accept one day that I won't be the same player I was. But uh, in my mind, I still think I am, and I'm going to keep going in that direction. Do you remember the kerfuffle that Ryan Craig was referring to? Which one? The in overtime or the five on three? Five on three oh yeah. yeah, I was yeah. like. Uh, it was a five on three, and I know that one of her players would jump one of their best players, something like that. And we had a five on three, and uh, I had the—I I didn't even have the puck, and the guy had no no <laughs> stick, no gloves. And he started skating towards me. I was like, "What was happening?" And I, I duck, and I, that guy was Nathan McEwer, like a tough guy in the AHL too. So I was. I was not my uh, safest moment there, I would say. But good thing Craiger was close. And, and you mentioned the impact he had on you. You said when you saw him, he was like kind of that first maybe guy you saw what, what what a pro was all about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was the way he was like treating his body, the way he was like uh, performing on the ice and how he was mature with and without the puck and off the ice, all that. He, he was really a good player, but he was a better captain, I think. I think he was uh, uh, awesome to be around and he kept everybody calm around and he is the same as yeah. a coach too right so uh, uh, he's he's he brings so much uh, positive and constructive and calm around the ring that he helps uh, uh, I think it helps everybody your influence is ongoing including this morning because we had some muffins over in the office <laughs> and Shane and I both looked at each other looked at the muffin and remembered what Patrick was said to you and thought we can't have the muffin I mean, uh, I was as shocked as you guys probably. <laughs> I was, was mid-bite. I was like, everybody's eating muffin around me. I'm like, is he kidding me right now? Like, <laughs> we just won or something too, and I had like two assists or like, and he came in and started giving me shit for. Sorry, <laughs> uh, he started giving me like, uh, I don't know, like just keeping me humble. He was yeah. like, every every week he was finding something on me. It was unbelievable. i like he. Yeah. Some days I, <laughs> I wanted to fight the guy. Yeah. Uh, I think it just built your uh, mental toughness, mm -hmm. and that's where I got it. It's those four years with that guy. I was hey. going to say, how much of an influence did that have on maybe giving you the thick skin and what you need probably helped you in the long run through all those things you went through to get to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, like as much as we want to talk about X and O's, like what did you learn for uh, in junior? You, you learned so much, but the – things that i learned so much from him first of all was his passion like i've never seen anyone passionate about something uh like that and uh it was quite remarkable and i i would say i have the same passion as him uh but um and the other thing would be the the mental toughness of a part of being humble and all that kind of stuff i think he really helped me for that and uh yeah so every summer we Play golf uh, together once or while, one, once or twice, and he's uh, always good, uh, good guy to hang around. Like uh, the bye week, I went to practice with his team. I wanted to stay on the ice and don't stop uh, too long. And uh, every time, it's a good, uh, it's good time, it's good time to have him. What's more intense, an NHL game or those games in your basement? Oh, the basement <laughs> games are. Oh, there was a some like obviously with the kids they get really intense and yeah. stuff. But like uh, at some point when my buddies come over, we always do like a a, a game just adults, and it's like a five on five like body checks, and like it's <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's good times for sure. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, well done. Uh, congratulations on everything, including last night and, and the big uh, win. Uh, appreciate you and Alex uh, letting us into your home and sharing uh, this journey with us. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.
Jonathan Marsh, so VGK Origins. Also, thanks to Shane Nadi for the hosting and the narration, the entertainment experience and production team, including in particular, Jeff Chavez. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching, and we look forward to more memories with Jonathan Marsh. So.